to the celebrity stories. We haven't done this in a long, long time. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, I guess it's either, I, I think we're too busy to come here very often. I'm sure there's plenty of stories that you have to t talk about today, right? Yeah, we have a few. Yeah. Okay. We are ready. Well, we, why are you ready? But I want to talk about some of the cases, a couple of cases that you've been, two of you have been working on independently. First with you, Brooke, uh, you had a case where a military person uh, uh, was involved and we were representing the uh, wife and the mother locally. We were able to settle that case. We were, yeah. awesome. Yeah, and that was, uh, did we settle it or did we go to court on that? We went to court on that. We went to court, but I think we're about to settle it okay. because of what happened in court. Okay, yeah, you know, we uh, it was very interesting. Uh, Brooke did a really good job of using our deposition trans oh, right. uh, without, right. a trans without a transcript. So normally, uh, for people out there, when attorneys take depositions, they wait for that transcript because you use the transcript, you lodge it into evidence, and you can really refer to it in a very meaningful way during the trial. Well, we didn't have time for that because uh, it was coming up. We took the deposition, and what turned out was Brooke put what the opposing party said mm. within her reply declaration, and I questioned how the judge would you know, decide on that, but or, you know, how, how she would view that, because I've seen before a judge say, well, you can't go there because that's not in the transcript, uh. but this judge uh, read, the, read the reply declaration and then came back and said, do you have a copy of the transcript? I, I said, no, unfortunately. Oh. So then when she took the bench, she questioned, mm -hmm. uh, did you say this at the deposition? And, and uh, 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 uh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was no yes. Okay. There was no yes, but it was very effective because it set the tone. And thanks to you, it was a good job. I think good it was job. very, thank you. I think it was very helpful to have that. And I think had they maybe responded differently, it wouldn't have been as powerful because um, she wouldn't have the transcript to refer back to. She wouldn't have known who was right, but mm -hmm. the the stuttering and yeah. being unable to answer, like when you came back from your deployment, um, it really just shot credibility yeah. and it you know gave credence to what we were saying right. in our, our responsive deck. Well, what was interesting is during the deposition, it was obvious that he wasn't telling the truth about when he was deployed, what date he came back and really what he's been doing since he's been in the service hmm. and by the way I love service people I served in the army for three years and I'm completely in favor of uh, soldiers sailors and and even Marines okay <laughs> but in uh, the Air Force but I mean the, he was in the army so in a lot of ways I was uh, feeling a little bit connected to him mm -hmm. but his his uh, the things that he said were so untruthful but he was he was caught in a box when you put that in the reply deck because the judge asked him. And he certainly wasn't going to lie in court, right. it looked like. So it was basically a, a, a stuttering and stammering, right? Definitely. Wow. So good job. And then Stephanie, you just had a big win against yeah. a celebrity who will so go unnamed We here. will not name him. And the only reason we're not going <laughs> to name him is because I don't know what the legalities are. Right. We certainly, I don't want to draw ourselves into a lawsuit, but we just defended it against a civil harassment restraining order. And the way that Stephanie did that was she filed what's called a anti-slap uh, motion, and uh, you know it sounds really strange, slap. You know, I, you know, we've only done like three of them in the history of this firm. Mm -hmm. But Stephanie went to the LA Law Library, did intensive research, came out with this magnificent brief, and it just stopped the whole proceedings. I mean, it was so good that the opposing counsel had no reply he didn't even reply to it and he came into court with his hat in his hands he was asking for a continuance the judge said sorry we're going forward and after they dismissed the case because they knew that they didn't have a uh, you know a way to counter what stephanie had written um, he complimented on the record stephanie's writing yeah and that was the he second time that he's that. done it yeah. yeah he did it on the record it was really really nice yeah. um you know he butchered my name but <laughs> after correcting how but to... so do i yeah. so you still like me i think it's trabanino um <laughs> yeah he was a really you know really really nice opposing counsel gentleman he he you know he thanked us for our time and it was a really interesting case because it was my first celebrity case and you know, we're used to these cases that we talk about where everyone's talking about page six, you know, custody battle, whatever. But ours just kind of went under the radar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just really interesting how um, some things blow up and some don't. But this this case that we worked on was actually pretty complex, right? We worked it up. It was really interesting uh, legal analysis that we employed. Um, you know, I don't think a lot of people use anti-slap in their cases, but it really worked out for us. Yeah, in fact, the 
court clerk on that one of the first court appearances we said is an anti-slap right. or a family law case or, you know yeah we actually yeah. had trouble with electronic filing because they hadn't seen any in the past one or two yeah. years so yeah. it was a it was really interesting it was a learning curve for sure but the LA Law Library was great they provided me with resources and they're a great resource. That's good. Yeah, and the, we're fortunate that the judge seemed to have some experience in this yeah. lab. So. Yeah, because he did. Um, he did kind of understand prevailing party statute and things like that. Yeah. Without too much oral argument. Yeah. Well, maybe we should explain that if you lo if you win on an anti slap uh, type it's, of motion, what happens? Yeah, it's an automatic uh, prevailing party statute where you are entitled to a contribution towards your fees. All right. You don't even get to the merits of the, the case. I mean, there wasn't any hearing afterwards. Right. It basically just knocked, it was a knockout blow. Pretty much, yeah. Good, good job. <laughs> Thanks, John. Okay, so you've done some more research. I saw the two of you uh, prepping prior to coming into the room today. So which celebrities are we going to speak of? Um, where do you want to start? Well, so... We're going to do Kanye, Britney Spears, and then Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis. I think we could start there with Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis. Okay. Have you I, seen Ted Lasso? Yes. There you go. Which, Jason which Sudeikis. He's Ted Lasso. He is. Oh. He is <laughs> I'm not sure I want to hear this. Aww. I love that character. Yeah, I man. love that show. I love that. In fact, him. I'm waiting for the next series next to come out. Next season comes out, yeah. Uh, so tell me about it. All right. So poor Jason Sudeikis, a.k.a. Ted Lasso, he's involved in a custody battle with his celebrity ex-girlfriend, fiance, ex-fiance. So they're not, they were never married, but they do share two kids. And so, you know, Jason's been in London filming Ted Lasso, and Olivia's here, Olivia Wilde's here. Kind of like the show. Yeah. But go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny. Real Life Mimics uh, TV show. Olivia Wilde's here in L.A. working Hollywood. I think she has a new movie coming out. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's like a big movie that's really highly anticipated. And their two kids have kind of been, you know, living in London, living in L.A. They're going to school in both, back and forth, back and forth. So, uh somehow co-parenting broke down. I think it has something to do with Harry Styles. Another celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> do we know Harry Styles? No, tell me. Watermelon you... sugar. <laughs> okay. No. <Don't> even... <laughs> it means nothing to me, but Don, go ahead. He's like the biggest music artist right now. Yeah, he uh, broke up their relationship essentially because he's in Olivia Wilde's new movie. And I guess when they were filming the movie, they kind of started a- Sparks flew. Sparks flew. Okay. Forcing Olivia and Jason to break up. Now, see, Ted Lasso gets it again. I know. He gets it. You know what I mean? This poor guy, I man. Know. I bet you he's heartbreaking. Just like he was. He wasn't even acting on that series, Aww, probably. That's like what guy. really happened to me. <laughs> poor guy. Can, can you identify with an emotion? Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, <laughs> I, know like, I know this. I know, I know this. <laughs> and this is another, like, stick to the heart. Uh, Harry Styles is, like, half his age. <laughs> Right? I think Harry Styles is, what, 30 years old? If that. Yeah, and then Jason. Well, how old is the fiancé? Um, I think he's probably 40-something. I think, yeah. Oh, she, she's. Oh, uh, Wild is 38. So she's older than the boyfriend. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's coming back, too. <laughs> Well, what, what, what's not coming back is the young girl with the old crotchety guy. I mean, they, those days are gone. Now you've got these ladies that are cougars. and Cougars. Break, okay. So they break up because of Harry Styles. And that's probably what caused some tension in their co-parenting relationship because Olivia at some point indicated she wanted to move to London with Harry Styles. So Jason filed a petition for custody in New York. Question mark? Why New York, right? Like hmm. the kids live in L.A., they live in London. Uh, he argued. No, he's he's originally from the Midwest, if I recall. Oh. Right. He's from like, I, I don't, please don't quote me on this, <laughs> but it's a, it's a state similar to like Nebraska or something. Okay. You know, so yeah. why in New York is a good question. He's arguing he's a true New Yorker. He's lived there his whole life. He was mm. on SNL for a few years. Well, and the kids were born there. The kids were born in New York. Okay. So he falls in New York. And Olivia responds with her own petition in California, in Los Angeles. So now we have competing cases in two different states. So, oh boy. Yeah, so Olivia's attorneys actually filed a motion to dismiss his petition in New York. And the court granted it. The court basically. Okay, well, let's break this down legally. Yeah. Okay, so assume that we're not talking about celebrities, but we've got the same set of facts where somebody's trying to start a divorce in New York with custody. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the custody. It's custody. Mm -hmm. And you got a custody proceeding in California. What are they going to look for? In California, they're going to look for home state jurisdiction, right. right? So she's been living here in California all this time? Yeah, the, she's been living here for the past four years. Okay. 
and he's been in england mm -hmm. okay and the kids probably haven't been there for the past six months i presume no they've been mostly in la back and forth with london la because they have been registered in schools in both okay so under the uniform jurisdiction right enforcement act kind of sounds like home state is los angeles yeah, california probably. <laughs> uh, it's too bad yeah so they kicked out his case in new york and now it's being heard here in los angeles okay there could have been also a venue issue. Yeah. You know, sometimes when the courts can't decide, what they do is they look at where's most of the evidence. Right. So the kids have been coming, living here, going to school. If their uh, medical records are out here, Probably. all their contacts, yeah. the courts look at that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I think uh, maybe just for the listeners, um, so home state's determined by where have the kids been living the past six months. Yeah. And that's clearly California. Okay. Well, the judge made the right call, I guess. I think so too. Uh, but I would have ruled for. <laughs> for Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. <laughs> well, see, I see a little bias here. I just love that show. I, mean, I, really I love that character. Too. You I know, really the thing about too. that show is, is that it's a it's a feel good uh, yeah. feel good series yeah. that you don't see anymore. Yeah. And it's kind of corny, but it's very touching at it the same time. It is very touching you know? and I mean, uplifting. You watch that at night and you go to bed with a smile on yeah, your face. Yeah, exactly. Know? During the lockdown, during the pandemic, that's what I would watch, and it would just make me feel so much more like optimistic yeah. and just good times but i do see a second issue in this case that isn't an issue right now but i think it could be a potential like highly litigated issue uh, and that's a move away right mom saying she might want to move to london in 2023 with the kids and that's definitely a move away right so and i don't think dad's gonna agree to that no and he the this i don't know if this is gonna hurt your your heart but this is the last season of ted lasso oh, so right. he's not planning on being in in England. Can he re-up um, for another season? <laughs> <laughs> Call him up and let him know we Dude, want another until season. Until they're 18 and graduate high school, he's going to be out there. But so, so let's think of that legally. And if she wants a quote unquote move away, uh, it hasn't been determined yet who the primary custodian is. No. And it's going to depend on the nature of the bond that he has with his children. And, you know, the court has to make that initial ruling. It might right. not be as easy as people think. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I think they're almost as much as they can at like 50 50. Oh, that, it could be difficult. I think their schedule yeah. right now is week on, week off. Mm -hmm. But but it's a weird posture because he's not in California. Right. He's saying, don't move away where he's already yeah. in, in. So it's it's a that poor judge that's got to decide. Yeah, that that's one. an interesting right. one. Okay, cool. What else do we have? Okay, so we have a quick Kanye story. Um, as you know, he is going through his divorce. What you may not. Still? Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been talking about him for about two for years, years now. For years, okay. years. I think she uh, she filed in January 2021. So yeah, about a month, a year and a half. I think technically they're legally separated, mm -hmm. but nothing has been resolved as far as property division and. And it looks like um, from the limited information we have that what's holding it up is that he is not serving his financial declarations. I'm unsure if that's the PDD or the FDD, um, but that's that's the issue. So so what is a PDD? A PDD is the Preliminary Declaration of Disclosure. I think we've discussed this before, maybe not on a celebrity uh, topic, but you know, when you get married, you are basically entering into a business arrangement and you have a fiduciary duty to your spouse. So when you get divorced, you cannot actually get divorced without disclosing all of your assets, and that's what the PDD does. Um, you can waive your FDD for the final Declaration of Disclosure, which is the same as the PDD, it's just like an update. An update. update. Yeah. Um, you can waive your right to that, but you cannot waive away uh, the exchanging of PDDs. So I, I'm going to defend him now. Okay, how much? How much is he worth? Well, I, I feel like I think at one point he was a billionaire, and then sometimes he's bankrupt, and then other times he's. <laughs> I think that in our earlier podcast, the both both of you said that he was more valuable than she was, and she's a billionaire. But think, she right? has. I think when we said that that was before she had sold um, the hot, the some mansion? of her. No, it's her business. Uh, she sold part of her like makeup skincare brand, um, and that's where she got a pretty big infusion. So, of so, so my point is that how would you like to have to catalog and put all your accounts and all your property? If you're worth like a billion dollars, yeah. which is what I had heard that it was worth or more than that. You need a, although it's not impossible, you get yourself a good accounting firm and they could do it for you. Well, yeah. Kim's done it. Yeah. Well, the only reason he didn't do it is because he doesn't want to do it. Probably. You're right. Right. You know, so yeah. I can't defend him that much. I'm sure you know? he's probably throwing a fit. Why do I have to do this? I'm not going to do this. Well, and that leads into the next part. <laughs> he has just lost his fifth attorney. How many? 
This is his fifth one. So he's now unrepresented. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and the judge said that he either needs to serve his final declaration. I'm sorry, his financial declaration. Of course, this is coming from a, a newspaper, so right. they're not using the right terms. But if he doesn't, they're going to have a trial in December, whether he has an attorney or not. Yeah. Oh, wow. Do we know who the, who the judge is? I don't know the judge, no. Um, well, that's okay. I, I think it might be Cochran, actually. Yeah, I think it is, too. Yeah, so that's going to be – I'm watching that. <laughs> oh, he's, he's holding on to that case. I'm yeah. watching that well, one. <laughs> so so let me ask you this, though, is what kind of issues could be in the case other than the custody? Because we know that spousal support cannot be an issue between the two of them. Yeah. Division of property, didn't we say that there was a premarital agreement? I kind of remember yeah. there yes. being a prenup, yeah. So I just want – it must be involved with the, ki- the kids or something. Well, I think you're right. He doesn't want this – to happen yeah. um yeah you know so why I mean, would he stalling yeah. we see that all the time one person just stalls right because they're married to their divorce mm-hmm. is like the term that you use a yeah. lot well um, and interestingly enough um his last attorney actually had to file the motion to withdraw um and have the hearing he wouldn't sign the sub he uh, contested the notice motion yes to withdraw. I mean, I thought it was pretty interesting because the article was saying, um, you know, she gave the reason for the withdrawal as a breakdown of communication, which we all know is kind of the standard term. Yeah, yeah. The article goes, she didn't elaborate what the breakdown was, as if she had done something wrong by not disclosing and why, that. Why was that right? Because of attorney-client privilege. Right. Um, it's really interesting. You know, you want to get out of this case. You can't represent your, your client efficiently or effectively or ethically at this point. Um, and you still sort of have to be, you, you not sort of, you have to be vague with the court say there's a breakdown in communication because you are still your client's advocate. You can't disclose anything that could harm them. You still owe certain duties to these clients, even if you're trying to get out. And sometimes that requires working up the case as Mm -hmm. you're waiting for the hearing to withdraw. So it's really interesting where, or or other cases where we want to talk about big names, but we really can't, right? Because it's to protect their privacy and our reputation. And so it's just, I think something Brooks that I want to kind of harp on, she said, you know, newspapers or articles don't, typically use the proper terms, which I think is right on point. You know, we read these things and we're kind of like, what are they talking about? And we have to explain what's actually happening, right? I think the worst is watching a movie with a court <laughs> yeah, proceeding and it's like, so oh, brother, annoying. come it's on. It's so annoying. <laughs> it's funny when so my dad always thought I was going to be a lawyer and I'd say, no, I, you know, I can't speak as fast as I need to in court, you know, like on TV. And he goes, you no, don't need to do that. You don't need That's, to do that. That is TV. It's not like the that at all. The slower, the better. <laughs> yeah. So, so before we leave this one, I wonder what he said in court when he was contesting the notice of motion withdrawal. <laughs> you know, it didn't say that he showed up, so I okay. don't know if he really, mm. you know, he contested it in that he didn't sign the sub. Yeah. Um, but it it seems like maybe she just showed up and the judge signed Granted off it. on it. Okay. Yes. So what other cases do we have? What else do we got? The last one is about our girl, Britney Spears. Um, I'm afraid to hear this because she's been under wraps for a long time with the conservatorship. Yeah. Now she's out on her own, and there's already a story about her. Yes. yes. Okay. This Tell me. one, though, I think is pretty unfair to her. Okay. So there's Let's... been some issues with um, the minor children. Um, recently, Kevin Federline, her ex husband, K Fed, mm-hmm. uh, said that the boys don't want to spend time with her. Um, and then just, I think it was. Two, how old are the boys? Yeah, how old are they? I think they're 11 and 12. Mm-hmm. Um, just, I think it was either today or late yesterday, he released two videos um, that the children had taken of Brittany, basically scolding them. Um, just he, You mean he posted it on the internet? Yes, he posted them on Instagram. Did no, she know no. she was being recorded? We don't know. Uh, uh, don't unclear. Know. But still, even, if she, even so, right. especially when you know that she's got probably you know hundreds of millions of people around yeah. the world watching every move she makes and you post something that personal on there oh it's, that's a low blow so I she's agree. yelling at the kids or the kids are it's not even yelling it's just it looks just like parenting to me you know she says you need to respect me oh. you need to treat me a certain way um she was getting mad there were two videos and then in the other video she was mad that one of the sons hadn't worn shoes in in like the ride date or something it seemed pretty standard it was nothing outrageous in my mind okay um and so it's. I want to talk less about what Brittany did and more about you know what co-parenting should look like. Um, and I want to stress the importance of showing that you are able to co-parent with the other parent. Um, we tell us to our clients all the time. Yep. 
you know, the judge is going to look at the parent who's going to facilitate a relationship. One of the big factors the court has to consider. Yes. And I, I don't think people going through these battles really understand they're so, you know, upset with what's going on. They want to do anything to tear down the other parent. Yeah. Um, and in reality, they're just, you know, they're hurting themselves. The judge wants, you know, equal time with both parents. They want to see that both parents are going to facilitate this relationship. Right. I think uh, also they're hurting the kids, right? The definitely. kids are the ones that are enduring all this emotional turmoil, back and forth conflict, when in reality, both parents should be working together to make it mm-hmm. as easy as possible for this transition for the children. Well, yeah, and like in this case, um, you know, w- what message are her minor children getting when her, their dad is posting these videos of their mom just parenting? Um, you know, they're being told that you don't have to be parented by her. And if, you know, she starts doing something that you don't like, that's just, you know, telling you no, you tell me and I'm going to, you know, publicly shame your mom. Yeah, it also kind of makes you wonder what's going on privately when mom's not around, when the public's not watching or listening. Mm-hmm. What's dad telling these children? Mm-hmm. Now, they've been separated a long, long time. They're yeah. divorced. I mean, you know, so is he still angry about the divorce what is going on in his head if he's doing stuff like right. that? right what started this drama which i think it might be that she recently got married i am a little bit more cynical i think she wants more custody of the children which is going to affect his child support well, I was, that's what i was going to yeah. get at and how much would it really impact him you know and the other thing is is you know how much more time is she really going to get and right. will, will that little bit of time really he should have gone to an attorney and said let's take a look at the numbers here before he does something like post something on, i on totally, totally agree totally. but i think he's coming from a place of desperation when your income is basically getting child support from britney but is, spears isn't he an actor in his own right no oh he's a singer i think he was a dancer? he was a backup dancer he has not done anything meaningful oh. since marrying britney okay does, well, who knows what what kind of property he has. Right. I, I imagine it's a lot. But, okay. Unfortunately, people fight over custody because they really want either to increase their child support yeah. or decrease their child it's support. And, and we try to people tell people don't do that. Hopefully that that's not the case here. But you got to wonder, why would you post that on the Internet? You know, not only is it an invasion of her really her privacy in yeah. a lot of ways and it's so demeaning but what about the kids right you know they go to school and hey i saw your mom scolding you you know while you were you know misbehaving and so you're you know you're th- that could be that could be something that they follow those kids for a long time that wasn't something yeah. i had thought of right and i wonder if he thought it was verbal abuse or something like why would he post that these are really benign videos um well I we see that in court i had a court right. re- case recently where there's a the guy was trying to claim that my client is an alcoholic, which he's not. And he submitted photographs of himself and her, you know, different, uh, probably about 20 of them as exhibits. And you look at them, they're a loving couple. And then during the trial, he submits a picture of her on a boat just smiling. And it showed nothing. Right. And in fact, she had a video of what was going on because uh, she, you know, she just kept it. And it was like, if you want to see the full video, I'm happy to play it for you. you but go. I hadn't even been drinking at that time. I, th- I think people get caught up so much that they think that things show things when they're not. All you know? the time. Yeah. So. And okay. that's that's our job, right? To to go through everything and determine what is actually relevant. Yeah, it's mean, truthful, right? And truthful, you know, if right? If you're sleeping at the wheel, sometimes stuff like that gets in. Mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately. So, well, thank you very much. This was really fun. And, you thank know, and I think you. we learned a lot. You just talk about these cases and you put some application to them and they come to life don't they yeah yeah it's really interesting cool well thank you for joining us on celebrity stories and we'll see you next time thank you (laughs) thank you